Okay, so this, the title of this webinar is Exploring the Path of Project-Based Learning, and I try to do it as practical as possible, okay? So these are the contents that we are going to take a look. Um, the first one will be the definition for project-based learning. Also, we will see a comparison between projects in general and, of course, project-based learning. We are going to see some benefits of our students, some special elements that we need for, for a project or to create a project. And we will see also a couple of sample projects. And yeah, we will see to finish the assessment, how to assess this type of methods, this type of methodology. So we are going to start with the definition of project-based learning. Um, project-based learning is a form of learning by doing. So in general guidelines, we can say that it is a hands-on approach. It is an approach that encourages both students and teachers to go deeply into a subject. So it means that instead of memorizing, students will design projects and will test them like real scientists. Um, this methodology follow like the scientific process, we can say. So let's continue. We can say in other words that instead of learning science, our students will design different experiments and they will test them like real scientists. Or in other words, our students, instead of learning or memorizing math, or instead of memorizing formulas, they will use mathematical thinking to solve problems. So I would like to ask you a question, and that is if you have ever done a project in your classroom. So if you can answer in the chat. Mm -hmm. Great, so yeah, we can read different answers. Some of you, of course, yes, or most of us, of course, we have done a project, but are we sure that this project that we have done, is it a project-based learning? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Of course, now we will go deeply in the definition of project-based learning and we will see more examples. So we will be able to, to say, either to confirm or to deny if our projects were project-based learning, okay? So let's continue. As I said at the beginning, we are going to see the differences between projects as we are used to and project-based learning. So the first thing we have to keep in mind is that projects, it's something that we add to a unit. So it means that it is supplemental to the unit that we are learning or that we are explaining in our classroom. However, project-based learning is the unit. So it means that the whole project that we or our students are going to create is the whole unit with all the contents that it has inside. Another thing is that in the project, the tasks are based on the teacher's directions. So it is when we the same than when we are explaining a mathematical problem, for example, um, we tell our students all the steps that they have to follow. So the only thing that they have to do is to change the numbers and they will continue with the process. However, in project-based learning, it's something more open. So we don't always have to find a solution for something. Why? Because the task or the project can be open-ended. So it means that any type of solution will be suitable for our project. We continue um, in projects, usually they are done independently. What does it mean? Well, it means that the students work on their own. So we just tell them as teachers, we tell them what they have to do. 
So, okay, students, you have to do a project on, on I don't know, on, for example, an important character, and you have to include this, this, and this, and they do it on their own. However, during the previous learning, it's totally different because the teacher becomes a guide. We become trainer. So we have to help them to achieve their final product, the result of this project based learning that they are going to do. And this guidance is done during the school time. Why? Because the project usually is developed in the school, inside the classroom. Um, according to the project, the last point, um, usually they are not authentic to the real world, which makes that our students sometimes decrease their motivation or their interest in the subject. However, in project-based learning, it should be authentic to the real world, okay? It should be something that exists. Okay, don't worry if you have questions, because at the end, we will have time to answer all your questions, okay? So let's continue. We are going to see now some of the benefits that our students can get working with this approach, with this methodology. One of them is that they will be working together. Working together is such a great method to implement in our classroom. Why? Because we will be, or we will have, better said, different students working together, which means that these students will get to know each other. And as a result, we will decrease the number of bullying in our classrooms or in our schools in case that we have them. Um, also, it will help our students to get to know each other much better. And also, it's a um, real life activity, we can say, because it will prepare students to interact in their real life, in the real world, as we live in a society. Also, it will let our students to interact between them. You know that sometimes in the classroom, we have um, students with different profiles. We have very talkative students. Also, we have very shy students. And with this method, we will help them to, to interact with them. Also, we will work in the four skills, of course, and they are reading, writing, speaking, and listening. It doesn't matter if we do this project-based learning in our mother tongue, like, for example, in Spanish, in Italian, in Dutch, it doesn't matter, or if we do it in a foreign language. We will be working on these four skills. So it will be helpful also for other subjects. And of course, it will be engaging for them in completing something specific. Why? Because during the project, they will have to achieve different steps. So this is like um, going up in a stairs. So they will go step by step and they will be happy with themselves and they will feel proud of themselves because the task that they will do probably individually, it will also help a lot to the group to coming with a final project. <clears throat> now we are going to see some essential project designed elements that we need in order to create a project based learning. Okay, we will start with the first one, which is on the top of the circle, and it is challenging problem or question. We need a problem or question to solve in order to create a project-based learning. Why it's as challenging? Because it shouldn't be very difficult for students, because if it is difficult for them, probably they, they will lose their motivation if they don't achieve their challenges, their task. So that's why it should be challenging for them, okay? We are the people who best know our students, so we know what is difficult for them and what is challenging for them. 
Um, yeah, we continue. Um, yeah, so it should be also sustained inquiry. Why? Because challenging problems or questions are used to launch an inquiry designed to solve the problem or answer the question. Inquiry means to ask, to ask questions, okay? And projects, of course, begins by students asking questions. Like, for example, what do we know? What do we need to know? What do we have to do to solve the problem or to answer the driving question and so on? According to authenticity, um, it should be authentic materials, okay? Because again, it enhances or it increases students' engagement. And in projects, also increases motivation. So we have to make learning experiences as real as possible. And of course, also because schools should prepare our students for real life. So that's why it should be as real as possible. Then we should also take into consideration student choice or student voice. Why? Because it is something that it should be done by students. So we as teachers become guides, okay? We become trainers and they are the main character in the teaching learning process. So um, students must be able also to exercise judgment and they should be able to make decisions. That's why it's important to take also this students' voice or choices into consideration. Otherwise, if we don't take student choices, it becomes an um, exercise, a regular exercise as we do in the classroom with a set of directions to follow. Now, the next one is reflection. And as D. wrote in 1938, we don't learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. So sometimes in this step, we can provide our students with some checklists or with some rubrics with questions like, um, are we answering the driving question or are we solving the challenging problem at the beginning in order to continue with the other steps? Then the next one is revision and feedback. How do we do it? Well, um, here is where teachers take step, okay? So we should provide our students all the time in all the tasks with formative evaluation. How is it formative evaluation? Well, it can be a checklist as the one that they can use in the reflection, but with different questions, okay? Why? Because in this revision and feedback, we should include the things that we want our students to learn, okay? Or we can also do it just providing feedback to our students, okay? Talking to them group by group and giving them some advices or some steps that they should follow, okay? And with this, they will be getting ready for the final step, which is to public uh, the real product, okay, or the real solution. So just to sum up, I have to remind you that this is like a circle. So we should go step by step because one step will lead us to the other step. And Remember that the main objective in project-based learning is to have a real product or to have a real solution for a challenging problem or question. Okay, um, now we will see each of them um, a bit more deeper, okay? According to challenging problem or question, it gives learning a purpose we are not just learning or memorizing content. We are giving a purpose to what we want to learn, okay? 
So, for example, in general guidelines, imagine that we are studying science and the topic that we that we are going to see is about animals. Okay. So inside of this big topic, animals, our students will decide what they want to learn about animals. One of them will say that they want to learn about mammals. The others will say that they want to learn about the breathing of the fish. So we will have different questions. And from these questions, the students will answer the questions and this is how the theory and the content comes up in project-based learning. In sustained inquiry, questions are used to solve problems. So here is where they have a set of questions that they have to answer in order to get the final answer to the big question. Authenticity, again, because it increases motivation. Students choices because students should be able or must be able to make decisions on their own because it is our students project. And reflection, we learn from reflecting on experience. Are we answering properly the questions? Are we missing something? Do we know how we have to answer the question? Do we know the theory points? Do we have to ask the teacher? Do we have to look on the internet for information? Okay. Um, revision and feedback, formative evaluation. Remember, we are the guides, we are the trainers. So we have to give feedback to our students constantly. So like this, they know that they are doing it properly and also they know that they are in the correct path and public and real product, a real solution for a real problem. Personally speaking, and based on my experience, I would say that these two things are the most important things, revision and feedback and public and real product, because they get very, very motivated when they see that they are giving a real solution to a real project, to a real problem that we have. Now we are going to take a look on a couple of sample projects, as I said at the beginning, okay? This one is based on a real project. Um, it's more focused not only on vocabulary, but also in second languages, okay? In fact, I did this project-based learning with my pupils, with my students. So the unit contents were food, and celebrations, okay? And my students started doing some questions, okay? Of course, the questions always related to the content or to the unit that we are going to see. In this case, it was food and celebrations. So some of the questions or of the sentences that they say were like, for example, let's buy a chocolate cake. All the students, they wanted to buy a strawberry and a vanilla cake. Um, others, they wanted to hire a DJ or a band to play some music. Others, they were asking what they wanted to have uh, for dessert, and they were discussing the questions, okay? In this step, teachers, we can help them and we can assess them if we see that some questions are not suitable or that they don't feed at all with the topic. So here we have the guidelines that I follow to solve the problems. So they should use vocabulary related to celebrations and food. They should use authentic or real life examples like, for example, they can think on a past birthday that they, that they have celebrated or in a past concert that they have attended or any other type of local or national celebration. And of course, language structures to present a project. Like, for example, here we were working also on how to present, how to make presentations. 
So they have to follow some rules, like um, some keywords that they have to use. For example, they should provide at least one example. Okay, they should use a formal language and so on. And these guidelines, I make them into questions. So here we can say we are in the step number two, inquiry questions, okay, or sustaining inquiry. So these questions were, are we using vocabulary related to celebrations and food? Are we using authentic examples? Are we using language structures to present a project? These questions are very useful for them because it will help them to continue or to follow the steps in order to solve the project. And also because answering this question, they will feel comfortable, okay? I always try to provide them with these questions, with these follow-up questions so that they feel comfortable with their checklist when they put the tick in the boxes, okay? And also because with these questions, we provide them some feedback, okay, on how they are doing it. And yep, let's continue. So here we have, well, um, between the last slide and this one, we have to take into, into consideration that the students, they gather in the group, they discuss, they already plan the project and so on, okay? So that was my criteria, we could say, okay? Um, here we could check if they included multiple opportunities to use subject specific language. We also could check that they have integrated their four skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And we can see if they include opportunities for authentic language use. Okay. And we can see that they match it. Okay. In this case, in the example. Now we are going to take a look on another example. Here we mix different subjects, okay? Um, we mix English and also math. Of course, we have to adapt the project to our context, to our classroom, and depending on the level, it can be more difficult or easier. The unit contents were measures and calculations and they were asking questions. We gave them also some, some magazines from different English supermarkets. So like this, they could see the prices, the vocabulary, the measures in kilos, in liters, and so on. And again, they started doing some questions, okay? How much does it cost per kilo um, if it is, an amount here in this case, 3.78 euros. Do I have enough with five euros? Okay, other more real situations, like for example, the price of the meat per kilos, but the specific amount of kilos that they needed and to calculate the total. And again, here we have the guidelines to solve the question taking into account that they have used authentic of real life, use of listening or speaking skills, that they have subject, they have done subject verb inversion to ask questions, they have used modal verbs to discuss possibilities, they have used comparative adjectives, they have used mathematical reasoning to work out best unit price for each item on the party planning list, and so on, okay? And um, again, we change this into questions for them, for the second step. Are we using authentic use of listening and speaking? Are we doing subject verb inversion to ask? Are we using modal verbs to discuss possibilities? Are we using comparative adjectives? Are we using mathematical reasoning to work? And we can't forget that we have to work always in the zone of D, 
development, okay? Because if we go very far away of the convert zone, it will be for them very, very difficult to catch up with the project, with the subject, with the content, and they will lose motivation. So they will stop their interest in this type of activities, okay? So remember, we always have to adapt the content of the project to their knowledge. And also like this, we will be working on Bloom's taxonomy with high order thinking skills and with low order thinking skills. And now we are going to see if the project meets our criteria, okay? So did it include multiple opportunities to use subject specific language? Of course, yes, because they were focusing on very specific vocabulary. They were focusing on doing, in this case, some mathematical activities. Did they integrate the four skills? Well, they had to read it in the magazine that we provide them. They had to write it for the final project, for the final result, listening, because sometimes they can ask to expert or they listen to the teacher when we provide them the feedback, okay? And speaking, why? Because they have to interact between them. So again, we achieve it. And did it include opportunities for authentic language use and or negotiation of meaning? Of course, yes. Why? Because they were using real language use. They were using real life situation. Because for example, in the first case, when they had to, to organize a party, they had to think about real life elements that they wanted to include to develop or to carry out the party, okay? And in the second project, again, the same, why? Because they had a magazine from a British supermarket in which they had to read the content. So yes, they achieve it. And last but not least, in this case, they had a clear and purposeful STEAM objective because this activity, as I said at the beginning, um, it was involved or it was related to math, okay? So somehow some STEAM element, um, STEAM lays for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, okay? So, some of these STEAM activities were included in the final project. Yep. So when coming to the end of appropriate based learning, we have a very big variety of things that we can create. Well, our students can create. Um, this type of real products or real solutions are presentations, written product, media and technology and constructed products. Of course, it depends on the teachers and also on the students, which type of product they or we want them to create. In the case of presentations, for example, they can be a digital presentation that they can create. Later, I will show you some examples of digital presentations, okay? or they can do it in paper-based in case that we don't have digital elements in the classroom or that our students don't have digital elements in their class, in their houses. So they can take also a big cardboard or a white paper and they can prepare the presentation in this paper. In order to help them, we can provide them with other things like, for example, newspapers or magazines so if they want to cut some pictures or some text, they can use it for the presentations. They can also create some written products, for example, project can be, or the real product for our project-based learning can be to write a letter, 
to a famous person or to the king or the queen of our country or to the president of our government and so on. Um, in the case that we are offering or that our students are offering different activities, they can create also a brochure, okay? So like this, we will be able to see all their different activities on the same page, or they can also write an analysis. This one, I would say that it is for older students, let's say secondary, yeah, high school students and even university students, okay? Or even if we have a blog in our classroom or in our school, they also can write a blog for the school website or for our own private website. Um, related to media and technology projects, um, as you know, nowadays we are all surrounded by ICT. So they can also create podcasts, podcasts are like uh, radio programs. They are audios, but short audios, okay? So they can create it. Um, they can create also a collage with different pictures. So if they have built something in their houses, so they can take pictures to the different steps that they have followed, and then they can create the poster. Again, they can do it digital or paper-based. They can also create a video so they can record themselves. Meanwhile, they are explaining their project or even they can record something that meanwhile they are doing it. Also, they can create a digital story or a comic if, for example, we are language teachers and we want them to focus more on written products also, but with the use of technology or media. Okay. There are a lot of websites to create these ICT-based resources. And also we can, or they can create products, okay? They can build products. For example, real products, this one I would say is more suitable for technology teachers. Um, there are a lot of kits, a lot of technological or ICT kits that we can get. For example, um, my students in my secondary classroom, they built a watering system for the plants that we have in the classroom and they were using solar panels. So this one is a real product, okay? Or on the other hand, they can create a small scale model or they can prepare a museum exhibition in, in the school or in the classroom itself or in the library of the classroom. Okay. And here I offer you some examples, okay? Um, this website, for example, is called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Okay, you can read the name also on the top of the of your screen. And with this website, you can create many different things. You can create, for example, the letter, you can create a blog template, website template, even templates for social media that you know that nowadays they are very famous with our students. Like, for example, you can create a Facebook templates or Instagram templates. So like this, it can be even more engaging for our students. You can create a mind map, okay? Whatever you want to. You have a lot of templates available for you. And you can edit absolutely everything in this website. Um, yep, here they offer you all the like if you want to create a comic or a story. So again, you can modify the colors or the characters, the text, of course, the title as well. Okay, so like this, they make them very suitable for themselves. And last but not least, it is the assessing and the feedback when we are doing an activity with our students. 
Something that is very helpful is called SBAT, as you can read between the brackets, and it lays for students will be able to. Here we recommend you to use both of them, action and or language. Of course, it will depend on your subject, okay? It depends on the subject that we are teaching and also it depends on the level of the students that we are teaching. Um, so if we include the action, it will be easier for us when we are assessing them or when we are giving their feedback, okay? This is the almost the last step, okay? In the circle that I show you in the middle of the webinar, this is the previous step going to the presentation of the public product or public result, okay? Assessing and feedback. And again, it's very, very important to provide them feedback because like this, this is like a trial, this is like a test for our students to check that their project will work. So in this step is where they will think if it is suitable for the big question, the result that they will get, or if it isn't. If it isn't, they will have to go back to the previous step, to the sustained inquiry, in order to reformulate the questions, okay? Or to try to answer in a different way the questions that they were asked at the beginning. And um, following this, what the students will be able to do is how we will check that they have understood the process and that they have achieved the solution to the big question at the beginning. <clears throat> Okay, of course, the, the final evaluation that we will provide to our students, it depends on our curriculum, on the elements and the content that we have included in our curriculum, okay? Each country has a different curriculum. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Now we are going to solve your questions. So I will stop sharing. Okay. Thank you very much, Anna. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. And Anna will gladly reply to them. Thanks to you. I hope it was interesting. I try to make it short and also practical, okay, focusing on the practical part. There is one question. Okay. So if only one student in the group uh, is active and uh, he does most of the job, how do you evaluate this? Okay. Well, the first thing we have to take into account is that we should make balanced teams. So it means that inside our classroom, we know that we have active students, lazy students, interactive students, shy students, so the good things is to find the balance between all of them. So if we have one shy student in our classroom and we have one talkative student, it will be perfect if we try to put them together to work together, okay? So like this, the talkative students will make the shy student to speak. So we have to try to do more or less the same here, okay? So that's why it's very, very important that we assign roles 
to our students. They can design their own roles by themselves. So one of them can be the speaker, the other one can be the coordinator, the only one, the other one can be responsible to look for the information on the internet or asking other people or whatever. So like this, all the work is divided into all the members that we have inside the same team. So like this, we will avoid to have students who are working a lot and students who are not working a lot. Indeed, this is a very useful advice. So if, um, if I may um, ask something, so I think that project-based learning um, might be uh, quite time-consuming. So what would you advise teachers um, time-wise? Well, the best thing that I can recommend you is to create an agenda, to organize absolutely everything. So, for example, that is the first day of course we have to focus on the content in which we are going to work and in the big questions that our students are going to answer so if we set up deadlines for our students and also for ourselves it will be much easier to to save time and of course to be on time because obviously this is something common around the world. We have to be time-wise and we have to keep the deadlines, finishing the content before finishing the term. So to have an agenda and to follow the calendar, it will be something which will be very, very helpful for us. Thank you very much. And uh, another question, um, if you could, uh provide some ideas for assessment instruments, if you have used your own from your experience? Yes, of course. Well, I have used like the questions that I show you at the beginning, like the criteria guidelines to follow. And also I have some rubric created and some checklist. Um, I provide them to the students. So like this, they know how they will be assessed that is very, very important. So they know what steps they have to follow in order to solve the big questions. Okay, Anna, thank you very much. Thank so you. Are there any other questions? Please, uh, we, we have a few minutes left. You can share them in the chat. So is there anything else that you would like to point out, Anna, for for project-based learning, um, an overall idea, conclusion? Mm -hmm. Well, um, just I would love to encourage all of you to use these active methodologies because it will motivate a lot our students. Because sometimes we follow uh, the methodology in which we were taught, the methodology in which all the students, we were sitting down on chairs and we were just listening to the teacher and well i believe that the school should prepare students for real world for real life and it's very very good also to get the theory in the school but it's even better and of course more useful if we have the practice so like this when we face these problems outside in the real life we will be able how to act or how to how to face them. We will also be able to communicate with others in a respectful way, even if we have different thoughts or different ideas about something. We will also be able to, yeah, like to express our emotions, and it will be very very helpful and useful. Nice. And I see an invitation in the chat. <laughs> oh, of course, yes, Marie. Thank you so much. Yes, of course. <laughs> I will be very happy. Thank you so much for all your comments. Indeed, it was a very insightful webinar. And thank you very much for accepting to be here with us. Thanks to you. Thank you for your 
confidence and thank you for trusting me. <laughs> so um, I think there are no other questions. Feel I see free. no questions in the chat. Yeah, so <laughs> um, now I would like to invite our participants to fill in the survey, which I will post uh, right now in the chat uh, in order to evaluate uh, the webinar. And thank you very much all for attending. Hope to see you in the next webinar. Anna, thank you very much for working with us. Mm -hmm. It was indeed an amazing webinar. <laughs> Thanks so, to you again one more time and I wish you, all of you, to have a good day. Great. See you in the next webinar, everyone, and thank you for attending it. Thank you. Bye-bye.